Hello, hi, Assalamualaikum everyone. This is Miss Naziha. So today we are going to learn how to use Paris Valuation and Investment Table. So before we begin our classes for today, let's begin with Umur Kitab Al-Fatiha. Okay now, so before we begin on how to use your uh, Paris Valuation Table, you have to make sure that you have at least the Paris Valuation Table with you. So this would be the table of content for the Paris table, okay? As you can see from the uh, slides, the tables uh, consist of a lot of formula, okay? But we are going just to highlight on the red color. Yeah, um, that would be the yes purchase, single rate, yes purchase, um, reversion to perpetuity, present value, and also YP dual rate. Okay, so before we proceed on how to use the Paris Valuation uh, Table, uh, let's recap a little bit. Let's do some revisions. Okay, so first, uh, we have the freehold and also leasehold interest. In order to determine the capital value of freehold interest, you must make sure that these formulas are being used. Okay, uh, so the formula are, yes, purchase single rate, uh, YP reversion to perpetuity, and also, sometimes there will be also a present value involved. However, for leasehold interest, the year's purchase dual rate uh, need to be used. And sometimes there will be also uh, present values uh, formula used when there is multi-term involved in the calculation. Okay, so for YP dual rate, there are a lot of uh, formulas in the tables. Okay, for instance, there is a tax at 25%, tax at 30%, tax at 35%, and also tax at 40%. The tax depends on the country, whether the government imposes 40% or 25%. So currently in Malaysia, the tax is about 25%. Okay, right. So another one would be YP single rate uh, is also known as present value per annum. Okay, uh, so YP reversion to perpetuity, we don't write this in the valuation. Instead, we use YP in perpetuity at ARY deferred for how many years. Okay, so the formula, uh, apart from all of this formula, you have also have learned the formula um, by heart in valuation part 1. Okay, so remember the formula? YP single rate is 1 minus PV over I. YP reversion to perpetuity would be 1 divided by I A. Present value would be uh, 1 over A. And YP dual rate is um, quite um, extensive, uh, the formula. But um, in general, it would be 1 divided by I plus S uh, in bracket tax. So we don't have to calculate by using the formula. So the Paris valuation tables help us a lot in saving our time. So we just refer to the table and we can do our valuation quickly. Okay, let's go to the first one. That would be YP single rate. Yes, purchase single rate or also known as present value per annum. So, when you look at your Paris table, okay, uh, the years would be on the right and also left hand side. So, that would be the years. On top of your table would be the percentage of the year. Okay. So, in this slide, we as we can see, on top of the uh, uh, slide would be the percentage from 6% to 7.75%. Okay, and moving on from top to the bottom, the years will be from year 1 until year 50. Okay, so when we are going to refer the years purchased at 6%, okay, for 10 years, what we are going to do first is first we have to look at the percentage. So, we're going to look at 6% and then we're going down for 10 years because we are looking for years purchase single rate 6% 10 years and that will be the answer 
So, next one. Let's say um, we are looking for years purchase single rate, 7%, 5 years. So, first what we did is we have to look at the top for 7% and then uh, from the column, we're going straight down to 5%, no, sorry, 5 years and then we got 4.1002. Okay, any questions? Okay, let's try another one. This would be the year's purchase of a reversion to perpetuity. Normally, we will use uh, this when we want to calculate the freehold interest, particularly uh, in for the reversion part. Okay, so remember, like I said before, when we want to write the names in the valuation, we don't use the names YP reversion to perpetuity. Instead, we use YP in perpetuity at ARY deferred for the number of years. Okay, now let's try. Let's say I want to know what would be the YP reversion to perpetuity at uh, 6% and for 10 years. Okay, so what we are going to look uh, in the table now would be look for the 6% first. So, uh, look at the second column, 6%, and then you move down because we are going for the number of years. So, in this case, the number of years would be uh, 10 years, right? I also forgot. Okay, let's say 10 years. Okay, now, so 6%, 10 years. So, the answer would be 9.30658. Okay. Right. As you can see from the uh, top um, row, okay, if the number is 0, you see, the year will be the 0. Okay. Uh, that would mean it is YP in perpetuity. Okay. So, let's say 6%. YP in perpetuity, remember the formula is 1 over I. So, if you do 1 divided by 0 0.06, you will get 16.667. Okay, so from this table, not only we can know uh, the formula of YP reversion, but also there's another hidden uh, formula what, that would be the YP in perpetuity. The YP in perpetuity is when the number of years is 0. Okay, right. So, let's say if you want to... Um, no, the YP reversion to per perpetuity. Let's say for like um, uh, 18%. If you see from the table, from the book, okay, uh, there will be a limited numbers of percentage. Okay, and if I'm not mistaken, it is up until 15 or 16% only. So therefore, if you want to find out uh, the year's purchase reversion to per perpetuity, higher then the numbers of uh, what we have uh, inside the book, then you need to calculate it yourself. Okay, so you just use the formula 1 divided by I A. So I will be the, num uh, the interest rate, okay, and A would be the compounding interest or the amount of one ringgit. So A would be a bracket 1 plus I to the power of N. Okay, so that would be the year's purchase of reversion to perpetuity. Okay, so now let's try to find another one. That would be the present value. So the formula of present value is 1 divided by A. Whereby A is 1 plus I to the power of N. Okay, so now let's try to find what would be the present values for 9% and 10 years. Okay, so first step would be we have to look at the rate first. So we are going to look at the 9%. That would be the fourth column. Okay, so uh, then we have to move down okay, to find the number of years. So, in this case, 9%, 10 years. So, if you go down, you can see there will be a dot. And then, uh, followed by the numbers, 4, 2, 2, 4. So, that basically means the present value must start with 0. 
So that would be 0 0.4224. Okay, so present value must start with 0. That is why, as you can see from uh, the table, the uh, numbers will start with point and then followed by the numbers to represent that it is start with 0 point something. Okay. Okay, so the last year's purchase that we are going to learn how to use from the Paris Variation Table would be the year's purchase dual rate. Okay, so basically dual means two. So you have two rates. Okay, apart from the rate that you are using, okay, let's say uh, I, the yield, okay, there uh, are another two rate that you have to identify first before we proceed uh, with the Paris valuation table. Okay, uh, the rate firstly would be the tax imposed by the government because the income uh, can be taxable. Okay, so the, uh, the number of tax or the amount of tax that the government imposes uh, is different for each country. Okay, sometimes it can be from 25 up to 40%. Okay, but however, currently in Malaysia for the year 2020, it is approximately nearly uh, 25%. Okay, another rate would be the formula of annual sinking fund. Remember this one? This is the fund that you have to set aside in order to make sure that when the lease has expired, you can recoup back the capital. Okay, so the sinking fund that normally being used would be uh, from 2.5% until 3%. So that will be the dual rate or the two rates that you have to identify. The first one will be tax and also the sinking fund rate. Normally, we use this in order to determine the uh, leasehold valuation. Okay, like I mentioned before, the year's purchase dual rate, you must have identify the tax and also the sinking fund rate first before we can proceed to use the Paris valuation table. I'm going to just um, show you how we are going to identify using YP dual rate if the sinking fund is 3% and the income tax is 25%. Let's say we want to know what would be the year's purchase 10%, sinking fund 3%, 25%, and the number of years is 5 years. Okay, so you have to look inside your table, inside your Paris book. On the top right hand side would be the sinking fund, 3%. And then on the top left hand side would be the tax, 25% tax. Okay. From that uh, table, we are going to look at the rate of uh, yield. Okay. So we have 10% and then we're going to down, okay, from the top 10% going down until 5 years. And then you will get the answer. So the answer for 10%, 3%, 25% tax would for 5 years would be 2.8479. Okay, so we have learned today how to uh, use your Paris uh, table uh, in order to do the valuations whereby you don't have to calculate uh, anymore using the formula like what you have learned during when you have you are in part one okay so uh, we learned today the yp single rate yp reversion to perpetuity present value and also yp dual rate the yp dual rate the tax will be different from 25 percent up until 40 percent uh, but you have to also make sure the sinking fund where the sinking fund is between 2% and 3%. Okay. Present value, uh, the present value must start with 0. So it will be 0 point something. Right. So YP reversion to perpetuity, that would be uh, the YP in perpetuity deferred the number of years. 
uh, using this table also, we can also determine or we can also find the YP perpetuity. And the YP single rate, okay, uh, is also known as um, the present value uh, per annum, okay. Right, so remember when you use the Paris valuation table, you must make sure that you only use for decimal place. Empat titik perpuluhan sahaja. Okay, contoh, example. So when you got uh, the answer, when you look at the Paris valuation table, okay, the answer would be 5.951895. We don't have to write the whole numbers. Instead, we are going to just use for decimal place. So, that would be 5.9519. Why is it the last number is 9? Because, as you can see, it is 8. And then, uh, after 8 is 9. Because 9 is lower than, uh, higher than 5. Sorry, not lower, eh? higher than 5. So, we must round it up. So, instead of writing 8 at the uh at the back, okay, so we use 9, so that become 5.9519, okay. Let's try another example, okay, let's see, when you look at the present value, and then you will get this answer, okay, that will be 0 0.596267. We don't have to write the whole numbers in our valuation, instead, again, we are going to just look at 4 decimal place, so it will become 0 0.59. 6.3. Why is 6.3? Because, okay, when you look at uh, the numbers, it is 6 to 6. Okay, uh, after 2 would be 6. It is more than 5. So, that's why we have to round it up. Okay, so it becomes 0 0.5963. Okay, right. Last one. Okay, let's say when you look at the Paris and then you will get the answer. 4.36611. Okay, again, we don't have to use all the numbers. Instead, we are going to only use four decimal place. Okay, so that would be the answer would be 4.3661. Why do we don't have to round it up uh, and become two at the back? Because when you look at it, it is 3661. Uh, uh, after one is also one. So that means one is less than five. So, you don't have to round it up and become 2. So, that's why the answer is 4.3661. Okay, so don't forget when you use the Paris valuation table, okay, make sure you only use 4 decimal place. Empat titik perpuluhan saja, okay? Okay, tutorial to test your understanding. If you really, really understand my lesson or my lecture today, I want you to answer this tutorial. So, you just use your Paris Valuation Table and then you have to find all this. Okay, that will be the YP single rate, present value, YP in perpetuity, okay, when, and then YP dual rate uh, with different facts and also different sinking fund. Okay, remember, then you have to submit this tutorial to me. Alright, all the best to you. Bye.